Hi, Kathy. Hi, hi, hi. I'm kind of cheating. <laughs> I have to be able to do it this way. I'm not used to this technology. Kathy, am I too loud? Good morning, love. Is my voice a little too loud? Hi, Crystal. Hi, sweetheart. I'm going to try to turn down my microphone just a little bit. Let me know if you can hear me. I have this whopping Yeti that is like it could pick up the dog from outside. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Um, sounds good. Fantastic. Can you see me okay? Um, I want to show you something that you ladies are going to laugh at. So you can hear this elastic I'm taking off here. If you have issues like I do with um, being sensitive to energy and kind of throwing your energy and not realizing it, this right here, it says earthing and it's connected to a cord that goes to an outlet and it connects to the grounding wire and you can put it on your wrist, you can put it on your ankle and I have been wearing it so that I can be excited as much as I want to to be able to share this information with you. I am so excited. Um, to hopefully inspire your creativity because crystals are incredible to work with. Absolutely. Just they're mystical in their own right. Very healing, very healing. And when you work with them, it changes your energy. So good morning. Thank you, rock stars. I appreciate you joining me. Mm. Thanks mom. <laughs> I hope Rosie's doing okay for you. Crystal, thank you for tagging everyone. Now, as I'm just going to go ahead and pull up our slides so you can see them. You don't really need to see me. We need to see the slides. And because I'm a little bit far sighted, I'm going to go ahead and expand it on my screen. But I'll keep looking at my phone. The music is the same level as your voice. Thank you for letting me know. I will go fix that right now. Because we don't really need that. Ta-da! Is that better? Is that better, Kathy? Okay. So, let me get my screen back up. So, this is an introduction, kind of a workshop, about crystal healing wands and how you can make your own. I want to share a little bit of my experience with you, so maybe I can help you. But I will tell you right up front that nothing is going to replace practicing your craft and building on your skills. So um, when we started, before we learned how to walk, we had to learn how to crawl. And then we had to start pulling up and then falling down. And then we put all those together and we're walking and tripping and running and falling, but we're making progress. We're taking action forward. And I just wanna encourage you that, please don't get discouraged when you first start working to make some wines. It's gonna take practice to learn your tools and to learn um, a little bit more practice of your skills as you build on them. You'll get it polished how you want it and you'll be really tickled about it. But the good thing is when you're practicing, you're working with these crystals and they're affecting your energy, which affects the energy of those around you. So excited, so excited. Oh, good balance, fantastic. Thank you, thank you. All right, so we're going to get started creating with crystal history. Just a little bit about myself. This was founded in 2016. I started my creative and healing journey with studying Reiki, and Kathy actually was in one of my classes when I was learning Reiki, and I enjoyed that so much, Kathy. Uh, one of my first crystal creations was a crystal point about this big. And I wire wrapped it onto a ring. I had no idea what I was doing. I looked on Pinterest. I tried to follow the little pictures and I practiced and practiced. And then I got one and I was very proud of it. Then I had other people seeing it and they felt, I guess, how much love had gone into it. And that started my journey of creating with crystals for other people and their healing journey. 
um, let's see here. We're going to go ahead and go to the next slide. Thank you, Kathy. Safety first. Okay. And you see, I've kind of got my hair up half and half. But if I was actually going to be working at my bench, I would have my hair completely up. So if you have long hair, please get it put up. If you have small children or pets, this is very important. Okay, very important. Our pets and our children are very curious creatures. So you want your crafting space to be one that you can go behind closed doors or that you can set up high enough that your children can't get into it or that your pets can't get into it. And um, a lot of pet owners don't realize that crystals can be harmful to their pets if they lick them, if they swallow them. And some of our pets love to lick our crystals. So please, when you purchase your crystals, even as a crystal collector, go ahead and do some research on them to make sure it's not going to hurt your pet if they lick them or if they accidentally swallow them. Okay. Yes, Crystal, hair up is crucial. You had a polishing accident. Oh, girl. Yes. Yes. Um, I have a rotary tool that would rip me bald if I didn't have my hair put up. It, it's so quick. The accidents happen so quick. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, it just takes a second. If you're lucky, you get away with most of your hair <laughs> and you don't hurt yourself any worse. So I'm going to point out here the how crucial it is to do your research with your minerals and your crystals. Okay, how do you do that? The easiest thing to do is to Google right now. And I know um, some people kind of laugh about that. Google witches, what have you. That phrase kind of cracks me up, but I'm letting you know now that you can deep dive just about anything under Google. So if you have a question about maybe a tanzanite, you know, what are safety protocols for working with tanzanite? And that should bring up some things for you to read. Uh Oh, I lost my, there you go. Learn the lesson. Now I've made these slides to help me keep my thoughts um, together. I kind of have ADHD and I can go from A to Z to circle back around to A. So I'm going to try to keep myself um, together. <laughs> All right. The rotary tools. Now, um, if you're working with, like you're saying, polishing. Oh, it scratched your face. I'm so sorry about that. Rotary tools. Um, I don't know if you can see there. You can see this one. Mine is a pendant or a pendulum rotary tool. I got it from Harbor Freight, which they have some pretty inexpensive tools. Mine has lasted three years now. Um, it, it all depends on how much you use it and if you take care of them. So uh, Harbor Freight's are a good place to look for some tools. Um, they do have the Dremel bits and the rotary tool bits there as well. Some different pliers that you might need. So, um, and these are just to kind of build up your little craft space. You're going to need some pliers and clay specific tools. So if you're going to start working with clay, we'll kind of get into that in a minute about what types of clays there are and the different kinds of tools that you might need for them. Okay. So have any of you worked with clay? Just curious. Now the different types of wands are based on the construction. So I don't know if you can see here, this little horned God that was off at the Conwood and believe it or not, the clay is air dry clay. It was just painted. You have not worked with clay. It's a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun. So, but the different types of clay, I mean, excuse me, the different types of wands that we have, we have wood wands, we have metal wands, because it's the base, wood, metal, clay, wire wrapped, 
which could be um, either craft wire or copper or silver. And then you've got mixed medium or mixed media, which could be wood, clay, wire, and stone. That would make it mixed. So that's the difference between them. Now, here's just a little inspiration. Art should be something that liberates your soul. Something that helps you soar. Oh. Define your purpose of the wand. So our first things that we want to do when we want to start working with making wands, you want to define your purpose. So is it going to be one... Well, when you define the purpose of the wand, then you can decide which crystals would work best to become part of that whole, the wand. You want to choose the base. Do you want wood, metal, clay, or only crystal? And you're kind of like, man, what do you mean only crystal? Well, uh, Deborah, who does Reiki for animals and just Reiki, she also had a wand that was its own crystal it was beautiful and it had a crocheted sleeve on it because it wasn't one that was good to have contact on your skin so she actually put a sleeve on it which i thought was brilliant i was like yes go girl to make something to make it useful supplies that you might need you're going to need the base that you want to create with whether it is a stick um, metal pipe clay or craft wire and you can get your metal pipes at like ace hardware jaegers any of those hardware stores have a pretty good selection um i haven't really found an aluminum sort of pipe yet but i wasn't really looking for it i'm sure i could find it there your craft wires you actually i'm going to see if i can find if i've got any up here I do not. Um, I have gotten some wires and copper at the hardware store. They're in little packages. Let me see if there's any questions here. I only have in other crafting stuff. Hey, Amber, good morning. Hi. So you have worked with clay a little bit, Kathy, in other crafting things. That's good because that lets you know how it's going to react. Um, you're getting to know that. I'm sorry. Since I've got my um, computer on full screen, it's a little bit difficult to try to, I'm having to cheat to read comments. <laughs> it's all right. We'll get through it. Anyway, your crystals and minerals, you're going to choose based on the need for the, the healing. You're going to choose the design based on the size of the crystals that you have and the shape. Let them encourage you, and, and I want to encourage you to spend time with the stones once you uh, come up with a purpose and you start to pull your stones together. I want you to take some time to let them resonate with you, and I, I want to give you a guarantee, but I, I know better than that, that they will resonate in your spirit and you'll get a vision of how they want you to work with them. So whether or not they want to be on wood, whether or not they want to be created out of metal, on metal, uh, whether or not they want to be wire wrapped or with clay. Um, I really believe if you'll take some time to meditate with those and try not to force, um, force your idea of I want to make a wand and I want it to go like this. Instead, just take some time. Give it a day or two until you feel this resonation within your spirit of, hey, I now have a vision. I believe that this is in order. Like you may sit down with them and go, I want this stone here and this stone here and this stone here. And when you sit down and ask, okay, guys, how would you like to come together to work in this healing wand? You may find out that they want to be rearranged. Or it may be exactly how you had envisioned to begin with. But please don't discard taking time to spend with the crystals. Because you will get an impression in your spirit if you'll let them talk to you. 
that this has happened for me for several years now. Um, even when I'm creating jewelry, I may come out with an idea and get started. And as I'm working with it, I find out it doesn't want to be that way. And if I'll follow suit with the, the new vision, it goes so much easier. Would you pick your crystals first then instead of the base? Absolutely. Um, because your, your intent, your purpose for if you're wanting to work on possibly um, a blood pressure, some stones that are going to work with blood pressure or balance, maybe an emotional balance, um, some stones that help with that. And you set with the stones and commune with them, they'll let you know and you guys will come up with a vision for the design. Now, the one thing that changed my ability to create wands was learning about adhesives. No kidding. And I know that sounds nuts, but it's true. Yes. Um, DL, the rocks do. Oh, looks like my video has been interrupted. Just a minute. Hopefully we're back now. Um, DL, I believe that to be true as well. So you pick your crystals then let them talk to you about the design that they want to be in. Now the adhesives and your decorative elements, please hear me when I say hot glue is not going to work for an adhesive like this. Um, so you may get a little stick and you're like, ah, I'm going to make this little decoration and I'll put some stones here. It'll stick with that. Well, hot glue is very temperamental. And it is not a long lasting adhesive. You could pick it with your finger and it's gone. Um, I'd hate for you to lose your stones. That being said, there is a place for using hot glue. So, well, we'll get into it in just a minute. Let me move my slide. Let's see here. I tried. All right. Adhesives. Now, my favorite adhesive is an A, B epoxy resin glue. And just a minute, let me reach over to get them. Ooh, sorry for the loud noise of my chair. Okay, I'm back. This is DEFCON, D E V C O N. And this is two part epoxy. I'm trying not to get it sticky on me. These I've had for a couple of years, I don't use them very much the A and B. So be very careful. This is one that you take a little bit out, put it on something and then take a little bit, the same amount, stick it on, uh, next to it. Be sure you put the lids back where you got it before you open the other one. Uh, because if you don't, you've now epoxied that shut. <laughs> anyway, then you mix those up, use a toothpick um, or a skewer to use that with. But it can be used on wood. It can be used on metal. It can be used, oh, I got loud, on glass. Um, and it is found at Harbor Freight. Let me know if you can st still hear me. Um, all of a sudden, I got really loud in my headphones. Now, adhesives to use with air dry clay, which let me show you some air dry clay. Um, since you haven't possibly used clay, here we go. Um, this is an example. Let's see if I can get it here. Sculpey air dry clay is some that I like. Now, air dry clay, you have to go in thinner layers, let them dry, and build up on that. Because if it's too thick, when it dries, it'll crack and it'll fall apart. It won't. It won't last very long. But air dry clay can be painted. It can be uh, sanded and smoothed. But when you're going to use um, the clays, your stone needs to be put in place before you start using clay. And you can use um, Eileen's Tacky Glue. It takes, it, it sets quick. This Tacky Glue does set pretty quick. You can use um, E6000, which is, it doesn't, it takes a while for this to dry, but it does hold a very good bond. 
<clears throat> if you want to use clay and no glue, um, this is going to be heavier. This is epoxy sculpt and it is an AB clay that you have to take equal sizes of each of these and you have to wear gloves with this. Whatever you use, please read the directions. You must wear gloves with this. Okay, let's see here. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Thanks, guys. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. When the stones are setting, uh, oh, with the air dry clay and the clay. You can also use Sculpsy, but let me uh, point this out to you. Not all crystals are safe to go in the oven. And that's something else that a quick little Google search will work for you once you've figured out the stones that you want to work with. So um, one of the ones that is in the pictures that you've seen the past couple of days had actually gone. Oh, it was the hair pick. It was polymer clay, which was Sculpey polymer. And it's a oven baked clay. Not all stones can go through the oven, okay, in order for that to work. Ah. Um, sometimes you can use rubber cement, and that is where you put a dab. Like if I was going to wrap a stone on top of possibly a um, copper pipe or a copper rod, I might put the Elmer's glue on the rod after I filed it flush to match the bottom of my crystal so that it would have a flat seat. I might put a tab of this on the um, rod and on the stone, back of the stone. Let them get tacky, stick it together. That sometimes can give it just enough um, hold so you can work without trying to fight it. Sometimes you feel like you need to be an octopus to hold things in place while you're working around them. Hope that made sense. Um, now the hot glue, oh, I'll get back around to it. If it's just going to be for decoration and it's going to be in temperature controlled environment, that's okay. But if you ever have to put it in storage, um, if you're taking it to work somewhere that is not temperature controlled, as soon as that hot wax, well, it's hot glue. As soon as it starts getting raise the temperature to the environment let's say it's even 98 degrees you're gonna lose your stone um ask me how i know <laughs> before i learn about a b epoxy resin that takes 10 minutes to set up i tried using hot glue i'm just telling you this from experience to save you the headache okay <laughs> Now, would you believe that most of the ones that are either on a metal base or on wood had an epoxy resin glue in it somewhere? So that is the one. Once I learned what that was, I was off flying. I was like, okay, I can do this. Um, let's see, wooden base ones, you can create the seats for stones with a rotary tool. And what do I mean by a seat for a stone? Um, let's see here. <laughs> Come on, girlfriend. Well, I don't have any. Yeah, do you? Hold on. I have a stone right here. Let me get it out. I'm not sure which one will show up here, so I'll grab two. So, we have um, this little amethyst double terminated point. I don't know if you can see that here. All right. So, if you have any experience with these little points, you know that they have facets, what they call facets on each side, so they're flat. So, what you would need to do, and let's just pretend my little closed pin is going to be what I want to set it on. So, for example, we see that that's kind of got a flat, flush area. 
So I could absolutely glue that straight where that is if that's where I want it. If I want it down here, it's still enough seat that it's okay. I could put a little of that AB glue underneath that seat, let it set for 10 minutes, or go ahead and leave it overnight because it actually cures better within 24 hours. But if, you know, if you're kind of in a, I want to do it now kind of mood, give it 10 minutes to set up. And then you could wire wrap around that. You wouldn't have to worry about it falling away. And then the wire wrap is not going to be as much um, concern of stabilizing as much as it would be more of a decorative situation. I hope that made sense. Yes, ma'am. And you already, Crystal, you've already got experience using a rotary tool like a Dremel. And that's what we use them mostly use them for is to come in and try to, because if I want that stone, what did I do with my other one? I just picked out. Oh, um, a stone like this that is kind of odd shaped. And if I wanted this edge, let's see if I can get you a picture of it where it's kind of wider or bulging on this side. If I wanted that part to sit down in the wood, can you see where that's not balanced on there? Let's see if I can get you up close where you can see underneath that stone. I don't want that. I want to put a divot in the wood to where this will set flush. Then you can put your epoxy down in that little hole that you made for that or the divot. And where is it? I like to use painter's tape to put pressure on it. If I've got to go do something else, put a little painter's tape around it to let it dry in place for the 10 minutes. Okay. So I know that's kind of, you know, everybody's like, oh no, there's got to be a magic trick that they're getting these things to stay. And the magic trick is using epoxy glue. It's AB resin. That's what it is. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad that that made sense. Now, would you... Yes. Yes, DL. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay, you know I'm totally excited to see some of your creations, right? I mean, <laughs> I hope you see how just overjoyed I am for you. This is so exciting. Um, DL, if you don't mind, I'm going to veer off a second and tell a story. Um, back in 2016 when I first started and I live in Arkansas. So I went down to the diamond mine. I was like, I want to find some stones and I want my own. I want to go harvest my own. And I came back with three five gallon buckets of Jaspers. Some were as big as my hand, some were a little bitty. And I thought, oh, those big ones, I want to cut them. I went and got a wet, uh, wet saw. And I was in the garage and I was cutting my Jesper. Let me just tell you, I was in a slew of yuck. It did a fantail out the backside of it with that water. And when it was cutting away that stone and it threw it on me and threw it the back of the wall. And it was all over my garage. It was a mess. And I was so disappointed. Uh, yeah, I was like, nope, that's not for me. No, thanks. <laughs> I didn't have the right kind of saw, you know. Oh, that's awesome that you already know. So do you, DL, do you have a suggestion on the Dremel bits to use for grinding the stones? Have you found, is it just diamond bits that you prefer? Um, sanding bits? Just let us know. Oh, back on the adhesives and decorations. Um, have you considered using leather? You can also use leather as an adhesive ability. So um, I, again, would put a little bit of my epoxy underneath my stone. If I was, I could do it on a wood piece. 
get that set and then use lashings if they're wet the leather is wet you kind of drain it out you know run your fingers through it get all the extra moisture out and then wrap it around and put just a little bit of epoxy underneath those pieces that are sticking out or you can tie them off and let them dangle if you want to add beads to the end of that for decoration but when that leather dries it shrinks and therefore it's stuck i hope that made sense and we can uh, practice that some other time if you want to actually do some tutorials to show you what it looks like so all right clays too many choices polymer clay is the kind that you are uh, it's oven baked but not all stones are oven safe now um, polymer clay is also what is used a lot and making polymer or clay jewelry uh, a lot of people do that um, air dry clay oh and the polymer clay can be sanded to a very fine finish a glossy finish even if that's oh my microphone is yelling back at me if that's something that you're interested in air dry clay which i absolutely love because it's lightweight and it doesn't add a lot of it doesn't, it's not as dense. It doesn't add as much weight, basically, to your finished piece. And you can use it on um, copper. You can use it on aluminum. You can use anything like that. Any base that you want, you can use that air dry clay on. But you're going to have to um, go build up in layers. And if you've got like little molds, you can push that clay in the mold and let it dry overnight in that mold and then pop it out. If you want to add that to your work, you can use the uh, tacky glue. Works really well for connecting that to dried clay with the um, both pieces of dried clay. You can also make a slurry. I know it sounds weird, a slurry. If it is the air dry clay, you can get some of this pinch it off and put water with it and mix it mix it mix it to where you have a almost like a gravy thickness and put that on both dry pieces before you do though you want to get an exacto knife and score both dry pieces put your slurry of the uh, mix of the air dry clay that you made a slurry up on both pieces and put them together and let them dry. Now you'll have to make sure that you've got it on a level surface or it could slide apart. I hope this is giving you some tips and some insights into some of the struggles that you just figure out working through it. Oh, now I've got a cough. Sorry, guys. <clears throat> okay, let me see. Hi, Delitha. Sorry, I had to answer the door. <laughs> it's all right. Oh, okay, you're still working on the different Dremel bits. Okay. Uh, you've been using actual wet sanding wheels. Awesome. Good morning, Talitha. How are the girls? Good morning. Okay, you've used diamond bits often with your Dremel. But for softer stones, I've also just used the little sanding wheels. But you have to be cautious or they fly off and you'll spend a fortune on wheels. This is true. Absolutely true. It is true. And just you need to be cautious. Um, and I know, Crystal, that you've been paying attention to um, safety precautions. And I know it's not fashionable. I'm going to show it to you anyway. Excuse me for the armpit shot. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. These actually need to be cleaned up. but And they've got where you can adjust the arms. Again, Ace Hardware. Um, hardware store. You can get some safety glasses. Okay. Just because I wear glasses, these are not safety um, made. So if something goes past here which i have had that happen before which is why i'm like guys 
goggles with using my Dremel, my rotary tool. Um, something that I didn't even think that it would. Uh, the wheel broke off and hit me. It was a, a thin cutting off disc. Mm -hmm. I know. You guys are going to think I'm a broken record. Safety first. Safety first. I love you. I want you to be safe. Okay. All right. Now I'll get off of that. Okay. Um, also, consider getting... Do you, I don't know if you ever go to the Dollar Tree. In the craft section, they have these little... They look like finger cots. I don't know if you know what that is. Um, like a rubberized or silicone thimble. That's what they are. Silicone thimbles that kind of stretch down over your fingers. So if you are using your Dremel um, and your stone starts getting hot, you can use that to keep it also a grip on your stone. If you're um, carving up your stone or adjusting the seating on your stone. These are all things that are possible. It just takes the courage to go after it. And it takes the... Um, love of research to look into what type of stone you have what are the safety precautions for that stone besides the healing properties besides the metaphysical properties you know that's all this um what drew us in but our safety protocols are very important because it wouldn't do the world any favor for you to create this beautiful i'm going to cry here Sorry, I made myself sad. Beautiful crystal healing wand um, to injure your health to do so. When you're trying to help somebody else heal, let's not do that. Let's be smart. And for people that you know and that you love who want to start working with the crystals and want to make wands, please tell them to please check the safety protocols for lapidary work, which is what it's called, whether you're drilling whether you're sanding, whether you're cutting, whether you're engraving, even the soft stones, madam. I love you dearly, but even the soft stones. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on there. Okay. Ugh. Thank you, Crystal. You make me feel better. You too. Yay, Dio. I'm so glad. Oh, epoxy clay, you got to wear the gloves um, because it has, well, it's some chemicals in there you'll just have to read about. Mm -hmm. If you choose to go with the AB sculpt epoxy clay, it's heavy. It's very dense. Um, just thought I'd let you know. It is more dense than Sculpey would be. So maybe you could use it in uh, little bits because you could actually use it. Uh, to create your own seat. Even, do you know what a bezel is? Like um, around, let's see if I can show you. The piece around this stone. Can you see the part that's holding it on? That's called the bezel. And you can create a look of a bezel. Even with the uh, epoxy clay. And then you won't have to use a different type of glue. It is a glue and clay all together. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Ooh. Need a drink. Anybody else need a drink? Coffee break. All righty. Let's see here. See if I've missed anything. Not enough to us. Not enough say it to us. I do appreciate each and every one of you. I appreciate your spirit. I appreciate your soul and the fact that we get to experience this time on earth together. And I'm really sad, sorry, about what's happening right now. But I do know that when change happens, real deep change, really sometimes what I consider ugly stuff has to happen. In order to bring it about. I don't like suffering for people to suffer. So I got to get off of that. But. Yeah. 
I have to take a minute and send prayer to all the mamas that are suffering right now. May their heart be lifted. Okay, next. Ah, tourmaline, yay. Okay, so if you can see this wand here on the far left, in the middle of the screen here, the very far left, underneath that tourmaline, that was created on a copper pipe. That is correct, Kathy. That is correct. So if you use the epoxy sculpt clay, which is an A, B clay, you have to use equal parts, mix them together until they're a uniformed color. They're not marbleized anymore. Then you're ready to go. Well, I believe that one says to let it set five minutes and then you could start rolling it out. You, you can use your fingers to form it, fashion it. It will stick to the wood. And you can set your stone on top of it and mold it up around your stone. Come back with some tools, cut the excess off, kind of uh, make it decorative if you want, like with a little stamp to go around it. Uh, and you won't have to use any extra glue. Absolutely. And then you can come back and paint it if it's not the color that you want. Absolutely. Thank you, DL. Thank you. Okay. These were some examples of copper based ones that I had done. And these are little pieces of copper sheet. I believe these I had actually gotten from, it was Hobby Lobby. They have sheets of copper there. And um, this was back in my beginning. This was my first year creating. I used my dad's uh, Dremel and created um, the elements, symbols for the elements that hung off of this wooden right here. This is a wooden um, wand that has, believe it or not, that is Himalayan salt around the base of that, which had been a crystal point sticking up there. So, I mean, it was all kinds of medicine going on there. But that's what was requested, and that's what we came up with. Uh, it was a lot of fun. All right. Let's see. The flow of creation. This was kind of, I don't know if I got it right or not, but let's give it a go. Idea of the wand. Yeah, of course, you want to meditate about that. Um, and I don't know if you use the word meditate all the time or just spend time to let it resonate with you. Choose the purpose choose the stones choose the design and then your base and then gather your supplies and then enjoy the process oh guys that was it so let's see if we've got any questions i do hope that i was able to give you some inspiration and some insights as to how this kind of comes together if you want to do a tutorial of step-by-step -step project, let me know. Um, if you start and you have questions and you need to take a picture and send it to me, we could even do a video call and say, uh, this is where I'm at. Now what do I do? Uh, just let me know. I am totally here to support you in this journey. Okay. Anything you need to know. Yay, DL. I'm so glad to hear it. And I know <laughs> the um, when I found out about AB epoxy glue, it was a game changer. Absolutely. I um, had the privilege of making a walking stick uh, like a cane. And that I used my Dremel and cut seats into this nice long stick that I had to measure up against the person who needed it 
uh, she was having trouble grounding and it was filled i just filled the stick with stones that would help ground um it was a lot of fun but i had to use that that was like the first thing i was like yes <laughs> thank you kathy thank you so much for coming i love you and you know i kind of miss my earring lady um, if you ever get to come back this way, please give me a holler. Message me. Maybe I can get together, have lunch with you. Uh, Tuesdays or Taco Tuesdays over here at uh, El Arito. Just FYI. Uh, what are we worrying about? Okay, let me hold on. I have a natural point stone I'd love to use in a wand, but I'm scared. If I put epoxy on it and then don't like where it sits, can I get it off without damaging the stone? Don't put a lot of epoxy on there. And, and what I'm going to say first, use something like the hot glue. That would be a perfect example of using the hot glue first. When you're working on a layout and you're not positive of where you want the stones to go, the hot glue, which actually there's like a low heat glue, if that makes sense. They've got some that are super duper like industrial hot. Don't use that one. Use the lower temperatured hot glue. I know that sounds, what is that oxymoron? <laughs> anyway a low temp hot glue there we go to set those to get a layout then if you don't like it it just pops right off just pops right off also here is a tidbit for all those who are still hanging around okay if you get something that um maybe a wand that you find at a secondhand store and you're like no nah, i like the base but i don't like the stones that got on there i can redo it stick it in the freezer for about 30 minutes pull it out and you should be able to take um like a butter knife gently underneath there and pop those stones off just fyi jewelers use that trick when they want to replace stones in a setting and it has been glued in by somebody who they didn't they didn't know what they were doing how to set stones and they glued it in and they go to reuse it and they're like okay i've cut the bezel open but the stone's not coming out so i have to stick it in the freezer for about 30 minutes bring it out and use a um like a dentist tool pick to get underneath it and pop it loose so that was something I forgot to share with everybody while they were still here. So, yeah. All right, Crystal. So, I hope that helps. Um, use the low setting on the hot glue gun and set your stones on there. If you like where it is, then take one off at a time and do the epoxy so you'll know where it's at okay um once you do put your epoxy on there if you're wanting to um, make it decorative i don't forget leather even faux leather will do that wet dry trick to draw it in okay are there any other questions Oh, thank you so much. What was the wax? Wait a minute. The dop stuff? Not sure is what it's called when you want to dop a stone. Um, no. Because that wax eventually um, changes with temperature and it, it won't set well. Um, but I'm going to say this. Give it a try. I've not tried it, so I can't say no, poo poo, no. I know that they use it on a wooden dowel. It's hot when they put it on the wooden dowel, and then they put their stone on top of it, let it cool, because that keeps their fingers away from uh, the grinding when they're wanting to uh, take care of that stone, when they're wanting to polish it or change the shape of it. It keeps their fingers back safe. 
So I do know that it can be heated again to be removed. That's why I don't think it would be a permanent solution. Um, but there's no reason you can't try and give it three months or so in and out of different temperatures or what have you and see what you think. However, we do know that it is used to be removed. You put it on, it'll hold for a while, but it is able to be removed. Okay. All right. Dop while in design stage. Yes. Um, will it damage your setting or your base if you have to heat it up again to take it off? Because I don't know, um, like if you're using wood and in a stick, it's got grains. And that dop, I believe, could possibly go down in. That's why they use dowel rods, because the grain has been uh, sanded real well. And it's not going to go too far down into that wood, if that makes sense. Oh, right. Um, DL, I, I've not used DOP personally myself, so I, I can't say that. Um, yay or nay. Um, I'm curious. If you have some and you want to try it, uh, let it, we let us all know. That would be awesome to find out. Um, I don't have any here to use, so I, I can't say for a fact. Right. Um, I don't know the actual steps to remove it. Like how, how hot does it have to be to get it to come off? Yeah, you know, I don't know. And then if you're wanting to use a more permanent in, in that wax is down in there, would you have to um, come back and sand that out to make your seat a different size? I don't know because I don't know that would be something to try if you're game to try the AB wax uh, excuse me the AB glue the resin on top of some of that and see if it'll stick you know or can you just peel it off I'm curious oh actually yeah you freeze it that's awesome <laughs> hey give it a go Ladies, if you've got some, give it a shot. I mean, get us get one to practice with. You know, don't don't get your prized uh, stone. Uh, get one that you don't mind practicing with on a stick that you don't mind practicing with, so you can see how it's going to react. Please. Okay, I'm excited. Hey, I found out something new. You guys are awesome. Awesome, awesome. Oh, if you make a wooden wand, do you lacquer it to, to preserve the polish? You can. So if you're using maybe redwood, I don't know, um, and once you sand it, it sands it beautifully, right? And then you can put a clear varnish on it and it shows up just gorgeous. I will say this, whatever you do, like if you're wanting to stain the wood and then seal it, then come in and cut your seats. That kind of needs to be done before you add your stones. If that makes sense, that would be take care of the base first. So if you're wanting to um, stain it and then seal it and then come in and cut your seats and then do your decorations that way. I'm very true, actually. Freeze. Okay. Uh, if you make a wood, okay. I hope that answered your question, Crystal. I don't know if you heard my answer. Yeah, that makes sense. So the glue can sit better. Yeah. Oh, I did. I did. Okay. Good.
absolutely um, take care of your stain or paint, um, whether you're painting symbols on the wand or even a staff. Um, and let's not forget that all of the things we talked about today can work on creating a walking staff, um, a wizard staff, something like that, whatever. So sometimes you come in and you put medicinal symbols on there and it could be wooden, wood burning. I think it's what it's called. Wood burner. Use a wood burner on there. And then sometimes you want to um, paint with a lacquer inside that wood burning or just leave it. I think it's beautiful that way, but it all depends on who's asked for what, you know, preference, taste and what all of these elements are speaking to you because even the wood um even oh, let me tell you even the wood will talk to you and let you know what they would prefer um, to be designed with <laughs> yeah crystal i appreciate you coming i appreciate you participating both all of you Actually, I really do appreciate you. And again, if you have any other questions that maybe I didn't answer, I didn't think of, please just hit me up. Uh, let me know and I'll do my best to answer it for you. Okay. I appreciate you all and I'm going to let you go. Have a great Sunday. Um, let's change Sunday school idea. Okay. Let's make it fun. <laughs> so I'm all about doing some tutorials on Sunday. I think that would be awesome. So have a great day. Bye-bye.